Hell's vengeance boils in my heart. Death and despair blaze about me. Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini, and for our unit on energy transfers and sound, today we're going to describe sound. So we're going to see how the pitch of a sound can be changed, and we're going to use the terms frequency, wavelength, and amplitude to describe different waveforms. In the past lesson, I've described sound as a wave. Now, it is also important for us to try to picture what a wave is. In order to visualize a sound wave, we can use an instrument called an oscilloscope. And what you see now on the screen is a virtual oscilloscope. So it's a computer program that simulates the uh, behavior of an oscilloscope. What does an oscilloscope do? It takes an input, for instance, from a microphone, transform that sound into an electric signal, and then shows it on a screen. And your typical uh, wave has this kind of up and down uh, shape. We call this a sine wave because it has the shape of uh, a mathematical function called the sine function, which you will learn in later years in geometry. But what I want you to look now is how does this look like for a real sound? So now I will change this into live input. And as you can see, as I speak, something happens on the screen. Now, what do you see? It's very, very complicated because when we speak, we don't make a single kind of note, uh, a single frequency, a single amplitude, whatever those words mean. So I will try to do now something really weird. I'll try to make a very simple sound like this. As you saw, the shape on the screen changed according, first of all, of how loud I was. Because if I'm soft, you see that the waves are not that big. But if I raise my voice, the waves become bigger. But also, you might have noticed how the pitch changes from Is it? So let's try to understand what are these waves. So let's understand the features of a wave. As you can see here, we have again your very simple sine wave. This uh, uh, dashed line in the middle is called the midline and represent when we have no wave. Uh, what will it have if you have no signal, no sound? Let's identify some of the parts. First of all, the top of a wave is called the crest or peak. So this is the top or one crest. This is another crest. The very bottom of a wave is called the trough. And you have one here, you have another one here, another one here. Then we need some quantities that sort of measure the uh, shape of our wave. The first one is called the amplitude. And the amplitude is defined as the distance between the midline and the crest. And you can see it here. Or, as you can imagine, it's also the distance between the midline and a trough. It is not the distance from crest to trough. It's not the distance from top to bottom. It's always the distance from top to midline or from bottom to midline. The second quantity is called the wavelength. And as you can imagine, it's really the distance between the waves measured, for instance, between two consecutive crests. Or, again, uh, that really uh, doesn't change anything. It's also the distance between two consecutive troughs. So we have an amplitude and we have a wavelength. And as you um, probably notice when we were looking at the oscilloscope, you, you saw also that this wave was not still, it was moving. It was moving from 
uh, one direction to another because that shows how the wave uh, changes into time. So let's analyze these two quantities, starting with the amplitude. Uh, the size, so how big a wave is, is what we call its amplitude. And the amplitude is really related to the amount of energy that a wave is carrying. The bigger the amplitude, the bigger the energy. Try to think about when you're hit by a, a water wave, no, a wave from the sea. If it's very, very low, it doesn't do anything. If it's a tsunami wave, it can destroy entire uh, cities. That means it carries a lot of energy. So uh, the size of a wave is called the amplitude. The amplitude is related to the energy carried by that wave. In the case of sound, uh, this amplitude, we will call it loudness. So a loud sound will correspond to a very tall wave and a quiet sound will correspond to a very low wave. And like every physical unit, we have a physical quantity, we have a unit. And this unit, in this case, is called the decibel. And it's represented with dB. You see D is lowercase and B is uppercase. So, as I just told you, a larger amplitude corresponds to a louder sound. So, a bigger amount of decibels, while a smaller amplitude corresponds to a quieter one. And as you can see here in this picture, we have two sine waves uh, exactly of the same wavelength, okay, but of much different amplitude. And as you can see, A has a bigger amplitude. So, A assuming that A is a sound wave, A has way louder than B. The second physical quantity related to waves is the wavelength. And as I told you before, is defined as the distance between two consecutive waves. Um, this distance is related to another feature of sound, which we call the pitch. Actually, the pitch is related to uh, something else we call the frequency, which actually is the number of waves per second. But in both cases, the unit is called the hertz. And as you can imagine, this is the name of a scientist, is the name of a German scientist who studied um, uh, waves. And as usual, the convention is, we write the name in full with the first letter uppercase, but if you write it as an abbreviation, and you might remember what we did, um, um, for instance, with Pascal, so it was a um, uppercase P and lowercase a. Okay, this is a similar convention. We have an uppercase H and a lowercase Z for Hertz. So uh, the wavelength, uh, while the amplitude was related to loud or quiet, so these were the two extremes, here we have high and low, as in high pitch and low pitch. A, a smaller wavelength corresponds to a higher pitch sound, and a larger wavelength, that means waves which are more spread out, corresponds to a lower one. And as you can see here, we have a new example. We have again to wave uh, wave um, they have in this case exactly the same amplitude so they have exactly the same loudness as you uh, or if you want they have exactly the same amount of decibels but as you can see sound a is this one the waves are more spread, so it has a lower pitch, so we'll have a lower number from the point of view of the hertz. On the other end, B, you can see the wavelength is smaller, the, the waves are closer, they're actually, and you can see really in a visual way, there are actually more waves, because here we have for A, we have one wave, we have two waves and a half, and here we have one, two, three, four, five waves, okay? So B has a higher pitch. In our next lessons, we're going also to see how we can measure the speed of sound. We're going 
to talk about the hearing range. So what sounds we can and we cannot hear. But for today, that is all. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini. Just kidding. And if you were wondering what the heck I was saying at the beginning of this video, uh, this was the English translation of the first two lines from the famous Queen of the Night area from uh, uh, the Magic Flute of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And by the way, is one of the videos I've linked for you to watch today. So have a good viewing. Goodbye from Mr. Voscarini. Now for real.